Well, it's not that we huge fan or against it. I think it's a really interesting idea. Let's think for a moment about why this is the moment in which this has come up, right? So let's think about the election in America again. So you had Bernie Sanders and you had Trump both saying, we are going to bring manufacturing jobs back to US, right? Mm -hmm. That's bullshit because for one simple reason. Um, capital and labor go together to make an economy. That's basically it. An economy is simply number of workers, stuff they work with, amount of stuff produced, and how well you produce it. That, that's pretty much it. Now, here's your problem. You can substitute in manufacturing very easily capital for labor. This is the whole thing about automation, robotics, all the rest of it. And even in countries that are awesome at making stuff like Germany, right? I've got I two German cars because one wasn't good enough, right? <laughs> so even there, what you see is if you look at the manufacturing, manufacturing output's going up, and this is true all the way through the world, right? We're making so much stuff, it's ridiculous, right? And we can get into the environmental consequences of that, but that's the fact, right? Manufacturing employment globally is doing this. You just don't need people. Yeah, now, let, let's focus on that, that phrase for a minute. You don't need people. And there's a certain kind of mindset in this one that somehow the manufacturing economy is the economy and everything else is kind of bits on the side. And that's kind of a weird way of thinking about it because it's not as if we're running out of jobs. Now, think about it this way. The world's aging. If you go to the Bureau of Labor Statistics website, as I have cause to do sometimes, you can download all the data on job growth, and guess what the fastest growing by volume job in the United States is? Elder care nurse. Yeah. Second one is home help. Yeah. Now, unless you're going to pay people to do this stuff, and a decent wage to do so, sure. given the sheer volume of those jobs in the economy, and the problem in the service sector, 80% of the American economy, is that you can't add capital to improve productivity. It's yeah. not easy. Well, so all this stuff comes together to create wage dispersal. Lots of people work in the service sector for shitty wages, very high returns at the top, the owners of capital taking so much. This is the inequality story. So all these forces are coming together to make us think, hang on, let's project 10 years down the line. What if we manage to create a world of super abundance where you can gen genuinely make enough for the planet in principle? put the environment in the box, as we usually do as economists, right? But you can make enough for everybody. You then have a distributional problem, and that's a deeply political problem about how you share that around, because you don't need people to make stuff. You need people to help granny out of bed. Sure. And that's where we are. So if, if granny, get, the people paying, getting granny out of bed don't get a lot of money, that's where these ideas come in. And we're going to have to confront some version of this as those processes unfold. So broadly in favor. I'm sorry, uh, I, I, I what you've just said, but you are wrong in favor. Are you? But it's neither in favor or not. I mean, we're going to have to deal with this reality, and this is one version of an idea that you can do it. Negative income tax rate is another. It's basically it's up to countries to figure it out. I mean, I'll give you one thing I think is, 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 that's dodgy about this idea, right? If I'm a people smuggler, this is awesome. Because I can basically securitize smuggling people from low-income countries to high countries, yeah. and then use criminal networks to tax them on their universal basic income and make an absolute fortune. So unless you have Trump-style immigration controls, it's very difficult to produce and police and safeguard that universal benefit. Or and, and I don't need 500 bucks either. So I need a thousand. Or, <laughs> or and I don't want to be your argument, but or it, it, everybody in the world gets it, so therefore it doesn't matter. Can we stick to the kind of realistic utopia uh, yeah. instead of the <laughs> unrealistic the utopia? Going so it, no, nothing's going to happen worldwide. This, we're all talking about sort of national welfare reform here. Right? This is an idea for how a country, for its citizens, <laughs> or maybe its legal residents up to it, can decide to reform the sort of welfare systems we have now for something that's radically different, simpler. And the question is, is it better or, or not? I, I like UBI, and I think there's a reason why this sort of idea that keeps UBI. popping up. What's UBI? Some, sorry. Universal basic. You know, as, soon, oh, as, soon, as soon as you've been to one of these conversations, you all just use the jargon. UBI, universal basic income. Okay, we all have that. UBI, let me repeat it. Universal basic income. So, so, you know, forget about the whole global thing. Think about a, a single country. So it's not going to be a problem to keep people away. You, you know, it's only people who can prove that they're legally in the country who get it. So, so put that to one side. Uh, I wanted to get back to uh, something Didier was talking about. So the universality element of it, the idea that it should go to everyone. That's both, that's both what makes it radical and distinctive, yes. and it's also essential to this proposal. So let me, let me explain why. Um, if it's not universal, if you say it's only for the poor, yeah. then you have to say at some point, okay, you know, so when do you get it? Okay, if you, get, if you have zero income, you get it. If you have 5,000 a year, you get it. 10,000, uh, 15,000, maybe we start 
withdrawing it. Yeah, if, you, if you're if you a high-earning writer, That's an academic like right. or a FT journalist That's like right. me, you don't get it. Do. So what do you do then? Well, you say at some point you actually start reducing it. So if you course, increase yes. your other earnings from 15,000 to 16,000, we take away maybe 500 worth of what you would have got in universal basic income. That's what we have.